Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a fortune telling reading today. I like to do fortune telling readings just because they're a different style of cards. I have tarot, I have oracle, and I also have fortune telling decks. Now the thing is, how do I feel about fortune telling and the future? You know, it's fun to tap into those types of energies, but nothing is fixed. Nothing is absolute. And the reason why is because we all have the free will to change outcomes at any time. So why get readings? Why even tap into, you know, possible future energies? It's just to basically take the temperature of where things are at in your life, in your energy field, the possible things that are going on with other people, etc. So it really just is about kind of taking taking a little bit of a glimpse, but you're not necessarily looking for concrete answers. Guidance is the key word. You should always go into readings just with an open energy of, you know, guidance, not tell me what to do. And usually people that will come to me with those types of words, I need, I need, I need to know, or, you know, I need to know definite yes or no's. I tend to, um, you know, either let that person know that that's not the way I run my readings um, or, you know, just it, we're not a fit to do a reading because a lot of people are looking for people to tell them what to do and how to live their lives. And at the end of the day, it really is up to us. So the reason that I'm doing this reading today is A, for entertainment, for fun, and B, to give you guys some guidance. So whatever comes through the reading here today, just take it as it resonates for your situation, but realize that nothing is set in stone. So if something negative comes through, maybe it's just Spirit's way of showcasing to you and giving you a little bit of a preview. If you continue to walk this certain path, this is maybe what you may experience in the future, but you don't have to experience that energy if you were to possibly shift your vibration or take a different path, etc. So that's the point. So everything that I'm using here today, bunch of different decks. I am using tarot. I'm using Oracle. I'm using fortune telling cards, a variety of everything, but I'm just going to be calling it a fortune telling reading but everything is going to be listed in the description box below. There really is only a few card decks that you can get on Amazon. The rest of them, you guys will have to go specifically to the creator and everything as usual. I always like to give credit to people that create decks, so I will put all their information down below. And um, to tap into our intuition, I am going to be using this particular organite that you guys see here in the left-hand part of the screen. It is called the High Priestess Pyramid Organite from Wing and Bell, so I'll put them as well in the description box below. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. The very first thing that we're going to focus on is just our current energy coming into, you know, just the month of August. And the reason I'm saying that is because people want to specifically focus on maybe a time frame. But the thing is, whenever you run across this reading, it really is timeless. And that's just the way I kind of look at readings in general. Even if a reading, let's just say it says August, but it resonates for you next year and you're just like, oh my God, it just popped up. I don't know why I listened to it. It resonates for what's going on for me right now. Then it resonates. It doesn't matter about the time, but let's just say August. So I'll title it as August. What is the August energies? What is, what is our energy coming into August? Just in general. So we are going to be using the Sevenfold Mysteries Tarot. This is from a guy named Robert Place. And so he has a particular website that you would have to go to. And this is a really cool deck, but it can be a little challenging to use, especially if you don't know Roman, Roman, um, Roman numbers. Oh my God, I don't even know why I can't talk. You know what I'm talking about, Roman numerals, oh my God. And um, also, if you don't know tarot, so this might be a little bit difficult for those of you that aren't super familiar. And I even have a hard time sometimes going, is that the right card? What is that? So we're just going to put those like this. And this is a really cool little deck, and you can get this off of Etsy. It is called the Theta Wave Tarot. I'm sorry, the Theta Wave Oracle. So this is an oracle. So we're just going to shuffle. So what is our energy coming into the month of August? August. Let's get a little bit of a header here. Wow, we have Haunted. Look at how cool this card is. I just love this deck. Haunted. 
So it might be that we are bringing something in from our past, something that still seems to be kind of lurking in our psyche, something that's still lurking in the shadows, something that we're still needing to clear, heal, all of that. So let's go ahead and get some information on this. See if we can clarify some of this interesting energy. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, six of pentacles. Okay, what I'm picking up on is that what we're bringing into the month of August is some kind of an energy that we did not receive. Like we may have really wanted something to happen or we were really counting on that thing that we were told was going to happen and it just didn't show up. Somebody didn't give to us in the way that we thought that, that, we, that they should. Somebody didn't issue that apology. Somebody didn't take responsibility. Something like that. So there's an interesting energy that's coming through that's still bothering you in August. Okay? So this is, of course, a state of mind. And that's why we have all of this energy here in the crown. It's a state of mind. Are we still going to allow this situation, whatever the scales that weren't balanced correctly, are we still going to allow this to bother us in our present moment? Are we going to still bring in this disappointment into our future? So if this is something that you've been hanging on to for a long period of time, and it just seems to be something that it's not resolving, it's not coming, because what I'm getting here is that some of us might be waiting for something to actually happen in the material world. We're looking for closure that's tangible, meaning that we're waiting for something or someone or something to happen in the material world, meaning that somebody comes forward with an offer, somebody makes contact. This doesn't have to be about like an actual person. This could just be about money alone because the Six of Pentacles has an um, you know, has an aura about it, which has to do with loans, um, receiving money, receiving our share, getting that payoff. What we put into a situation is finally paying off. So this could be some sort of karmic debt as well, as in we're still feeling the effects of karmic debt, meaning that a cycle is just still lurking. So a lot of energy coming through. So let's go ahead and just draw two more cards just to see if we can get any more clarity on what that is or just maybe something else that's also going to be coming in. We have structure. And we have the King of Cups. Now, this could be specific for some of you out there that are dealing with... Um, what is this? Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is Scorpio. King of Cups is Scorpio. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily just be a Scorpio. It could be any kind of a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, but the King of Cups is significant for Scorpio. So maybe you're a Scorpio. Maybe you're dealing with a Scorpio. Maybe it has nothing to do with the Scorpio, and that's fine too. But structure. We're trying to structure. We're trying to build something when it comes to love or some sort of an offer, or we're trying to restructure ourselves after the just major devastation of something crumbling, perhaps. So we're still haunted, I'm getting here in our emotions. We're still haunted by the perhaps actions of another. Maybe we're waiting for this offer from this King of Cups. And it just doesn't seem to be coming. So the message that I'm getting here from Spirit is that this particular individual, if you're waiting on them, there is something that they are still needing to structure. So it could just be that A, they're not ready, or B, it's time for you to take action in your own life and start to master your own emotions rather than waiting on this individual to help to make you feel secure. This is about securing our own emotions, mastering our own emotions, being okay to not receive that love offer or admiration or affection from another. The King of Cups is totally fine on his own. So I feel like coming into the month of August, we are being almost presented immediately with the energies of, do we close the cycle with this Mercury retrograde? Because it ends, it ends on January, I'm sorry, January, it ends on July 31st. So are we still taking in whatever we ha should have left behind and dealt with, left in the past? Are we still taking this into August? Or are we going to really learn to restructure and to become solid on our own? Okay. 
So there's a heavy message here for some of you that can continue to carry on this pain into, let's just say for the rest of the year, for some of you for the rest of your life, at some point we've got to be able to master our own emotions and master this situation, whatever it might be, and really start to just structure our own energy rather than focusing on what we didn't get or the lack in a situation. We need to start looking forward towards situations or people that do want to give back to us in an equal way. It's about no longer wasting time with individuals that can't show up emotionally for us, that cannot give to us in the way in which we give. That's what the Six of Pentacles is. It's equal, back and forth, give and take. It's the scales are balanced. So if there's any kind of emotional imbalance with individuals or when you're dealing with an, just a person in particular, it's about restructuring yourself, becoming the king of your own emotional throne, sitting on that throne, being in control of your emotions and dictating to other people what your needs are and what, what you, how you want things to be. Not allowing other people to just come half-assed to you anymore. So we're taking control in August. So coming in, we might still have that residual energy, but we're taking control and we're restructuring ourselves like an emperor. And that's the energy that I'm getting from the King of Cups. It's actually an emperor's energy, taking charge, no longer allowing our past to define our future. Beautiful. Love it. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and move on into what is the energies that may be challenging us, which we already have come across some very challenging energy or blessing us. So it can be either or. So we're going to actually go now into this deck, and it's also from Robert Place, and it is called the Alchemical Tarot. We're going to combine them with the tea leaf reading cards. All right, let's see what we get. All right. We have haystack. Look at this. Karma. You will reap what you have sown. So this is interesting because we just got this energy of haunted haunted by something okay haunted by some kind of karmic perhaps situation karma that we're trying to still balance we're trying to balance these scales perhaps ourselves we're waiting for some sort of payback we're waiting for something to balance out and maybe it's just not happening how long can we continue to stay in this karmic field right so let's go ahead and get a card with this. This right here is the Eight of Cups energy. Yeah, Eight of Cups, look at that. So the Eight of Cups, you guys, is that reminder that something is ready to be left behind, okay? We don't always get the luxury of seeing karma balance out. Sometimes we just have to have faith that the universe is going to take care of it in the best way possible. We just may not be able to witness it with our own eyes. And that might be where some of us are stuck as we're waiting. We're waiting to see something develop. We're waiting to see something happen. And the longer that we wait, it seems like the more time is just wasting and going on. And the more time that we're just losing, waiting around for whatever this is. At this point, it's haunting our lives. It's not enhancing our lives. So this is a very specific message for those of you that are waiting on the scales of justice. It doesn't mean it won't happen, but it just may not come in the way or in the time frame that you're looking for. So Spirit is saying, how much more time are you going to spend on waiting for this to balance out? So Eight of Cups means it's time to abandon something that's just no longer serving us. We need to walk away, okay? You've learned all that you can. You've done all that you can in this situation. Now you got to let the universe do the rest. 
So that's where I'm going to end that there. I don't feel called to go into any more information for what is blocking us. I think it's pretty evident what is blocking us at this juncture <laughs> in the reading. So let's go ahead and take a look at the energies of the past, okay? Specifically energies of the past. So this particular deck is just called Tarot, and um, it's kind of a unique deck, but it is something that you can get on Amazon, so I will put the information down below. But it looks a little different. It's not red. It's like magenta pink and black. This right here is called the Answer Deck. Very unique deck. What is the past? And this particular deck has past energy. So I'll read it to you. And I'm not reading reversals on this one here. Okay. I love this. We have another king and we also have the master, which is a king. But it says past. It says had been fixated on or fixated on acquiring riches the master so what i'm getting for some of you this could be your energy or this could be somebody in your life the only reason i'm going to say that it might be connected to this king that you are either waiting on or somebody that you are you know waiting on that offer i feel like this is some kind of energy that's or message that is telling you that this person was fueled in the material world fueled by ego fueled by materialism Okay, and that's something that this person has to or had to master. Now, this could, of course, be your own energy. It could be, as in we were very focused in the material. We were very focused on the things that we thought were going to bring us happiness, but it didn't. So we had to go deeper. We had to go within. We had to really do the soul work. We really had to get to know ourselves. We really had to do the healing the outside losing the weight or you know acquiring that car or that house or getting that job with the great pay i'm not saying that those things didn't make you happy but it didn't fulfill you and fill that cup all the way so it may be that some of you had to go down a certain path just to realize that what you were really looking for was within Okay, but this could also have to do with the person that you are either waiting on as in they are trapped, they are stuck, and I'm getting still in the material world, in ego, in riches, in fame, all of those things, all of those things that just lead to a dead end if you're not careful. Now, that doesn't mean for everybody, but if you're not careful, you can really get sucked into that world. So let's go ahead and get another card here. We have the Ace of Cups. So it's interesting that I did just say something about we didn't fill that cup. Somebody is trying to fill that cup. I see the Ace of Cups as our own energy. It says a search for higher meaning. Wow, exactly. Somebody is searching for higher meaning, but they looked in the wrong places. When they got what they were thought they were looking for, it actually didn't make them happy. It didn't fulfill them in the way that they thought it was going to. So this is a lesson that somebody has to master. Now, this could be you as well. But I feel like it for some of you, it has to do with this other person. It's just telling you. Yep, gaining the wisdom. But the thing is, we can only gain wisdom through our own experiences. People can't tell us. We can't read it and then understand it. We can be um, inspired. But we can't really take other people's words or experiences. You know, we have to go through things ourselves in order to get it and understand. So if you guys have gone and search for something just to have fail, failed or fallen, it's all been for your soul's growth and development. So it's not a waste. Your past is not a waste. Perhaps your experience with this individual was not a complete waste. You learned a lot. But we do know that now it is time for us to move forward, to move on, to separate ourselves from whatever this situation may be. Now, this situation may return once again, but right now, it seems that whatever we're waiting for is not coming, not right now. And so we've got to carry on. We've got to keep going in search of the meaning, the higher meaning in life. We can't continue to ascend and develop spiritually if we're waiting on other people to bring us happiness 
We have to be able to fulfill our own cup. And remember, that king of cups knows how to fill his own cup. All right? So some really interesting energy coming through. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the environment. So this is other people's energies that are affecting our world, our situation. So we're going to go here into the Hanson Roberts Tarot. And we're going to combine these with the Count Marco's Cards of Cartomacy. cardamancy however you say it all right the energies of other people in our environment and how they might be affecting us in any way okay so we have the nine of rods which is the nine of wands and it is coming up reverse let's go ahead and get a card with this we have the Queen of Spades. So there could be a specific person. Now this particular deck, so it's different than tarot, does say the Queen of Spades represents a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. It says a dark-haired, beautiful woman, a natural leader, somebody who could be ruthless and seductive, a commander or a controller, a dominating person. It says often feels wronged, uh, cold, calculating, and deceptive. People avoid her without compassion. So this could be a difficult individual in your life. This nine of rods in the upright position is an indication of fighting with someone. This is somebody who you have to put your defenses up against. But guess what? Your defenses are coming down. You're no longer wanting to participate with whoever this is, or you no longer want to be this queen of, of spades if that is you. You no longer want to be angry. You no longer want to be bitter. You no longer want to be that person that people are avoiding because maybe your energy is low or you're, you're just so angry or so just just unhappy that people are just not even wanting to be around you anymore. You're done with the fight. You're done being this person if that's you. Or if there's been a person in your life that has been very difficult for you, you're disconnecting. You're walking away. You're over it. Good for you. Good for you either way. If that's you or someone else, good for you. And we have a judgment card. That judgment card, you guys, is about karma. Oh my gosh, we have another queen. So this is interesting because we are talking about other people in your life and there are people coming up specifically. Now we have an Aries, Leo, or a Sagittarius. It says the queen of diamonds, which says fair blue-eyed woman, physically and mentally strong, knows her mind, intellect, and imaginative, flirtatious, energetic, dynamic, excellent in business, but she can invoke jealousy in other people. She needs social interaction. So this is what I'm getting here. For some of you that are the same sex, Okay, same-sex connections, just same-sex sex friendships, family members. It doesn't have to be, though, because this could be, you know, a male and a female, but somebody has feminine energy, or you both have feminine energy. So try not to get caught up in the sexes. But all I know is that we have two people. You are one of them, and the other person is the other. So what I'm getting, yes, you can fall into this category here where you can go back and forth. This might be who you really are, but your circumstances have caused you to feel like this. Okay, so now you're making a judgment call. You no longer want to be this individual. And why are you this individual? Because other people in your environment perhaps have been doing things, and it's not to say that it's everybody else and people are making you this way, but your circumstances have not helped, you know, it hasn't helped you. Meaning like it has caused you to feel like maybe you need to get into this energy to defend yourself, or maybe you've just become outright bitter because of other people's, you know, bullshit pretty much. So the thing is, you no longer want to be this individual. So you're making a judgment call. Now, what I'm also getting specifically, though, is for some of you, you're her or him, and this is the other person. This person actually outshines this individual. The light beats the dark. So don't be... Don't be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, try not to go down the path that this person might be trying to take you down. Make the judgment call. You're done. Pulling away and, and just not participating with this individual anymore is the best decision that you can make. It's a karmic tie. There was a karmic lesson at hand, but it's over now. It's time for you to disconnect. So we've got earth and we've got fire. That could be specific for some of you. So this earth energy, you're done. 
If you're a fire sign, you're done with that earth energy. It's a judgment call. You see clear as day. There's no longer no longer any reason to fight this any longer. You have all the information that you need. The, this light, if this person was trying to you know, darken you up or whatever the situation may, may be, you're just done. So you're making the judgment call. You're ending the cycle. Good for you. So to me, it's like you're pulling away from bullshit or you're pulling away your need to be defensive and ugly, meaning ugly energy. You're not allowing other people to take you down any longer. I love it. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what spirit wants to uh, wants you to focus on. Okay. What spirit wants you to really, really focus on in regards to like your goals and just things that they want you to, you know, just try to try to focus on. And when that means focus on, it could just be that maybe there's a challenge, something that you need to heal still, but this is something where you just need to pay a little bit more attention to something. Okay, so this deck here is called the Ar Arcanum or Arcanum Tarot. And this one is called the Intuit Nuance Oracle. Swans. Interesting. We have soulmate, twin flame, the one, partners, a pair, two of a kind. Now, remember, you guys, twin I mean, soulmates can be family members, friends. This does not have to be romantic. Twin flame is a specific individual that you have a contract with, so there could be something significant there for you. Wow, oh, look at that, Ten of Cups. I'm getting more of an energy, though, of people that are either um, married. So if you are currently married, this is about you really focusing on your marriage, really focusing on your family, really focusing on your friends, the life that you've built up for yourself, just being happy with who you're with. So if you guys are longing to to be with someone and that's the state that you're constantly in is, is constantly longing rather than just appreciating the people that are around you and what you have spirit is telling you it's time for you to focus on what you do have it's time for you to focus on the happiness that you deserve okay but we cannot really be in the vibration of happiness if we're constantly longing for it as in I'll be happy when. Be happy now. Choose to be happy now is what Spirit's saying. So face the people that you're with right now. Even if you're not with the one that you love right now, love the people that you're with. That is what I'm getting here from this card. Okay. Yes, of course, for some of you, you might take that as, you know, your, your goal to reconnect with your soulmate, your twin flame is on the horizon. That could be it as well. But I'm really getting more of an energy of being in a state of grace right now, being in the vibration of 10 of cups right now. It's not in the future. It's not in the past. It's right now. That's what they want you to focus on. And we have squirrel. It says hyperactive, secretive, scolding accusations, miscommunications, or giving lip service. That's interesting. We have nine of pentacles. Okay, so I'm immediately getting this card here. I mean, I'm, I'm immediately getting this message here. Obviously, I already have the card. This is the message. The nine of pentacles, nine, number nine. Nine of pentacles is the energy of just focusing on yourself. Pull out of all of this crap, whatever the squirrely energy is around you, whatever other people are trying to throw your way, shade they're throwing your way, drama they're throwing your way, uh, accusations, it does say that here, um, or any kind of miscommunication, just do your own thing. It's best at this time to really just focus on yourself, really try not to focus so much on what other people are doing or what other people have or what other people are thinking about you. So I'm just getting the messages, be in the energy of happiness, be in the vibration of happiness and joy. Don't let other people rob your joy. So if you got any squirrels around you, throw those nuts at them and kick them to the curb. That is what I'm getting. It, I don't mean to be negative or mean about it, but it's like you don't have time for that. People might be trying to take away from your 10 of cups. No, you're getting rid of energy that no longer serves you. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what are some possible future energies on the horizon possible future energies on the horizon okay so we're going to be using my twin flame journey tarot that i created if you guys are interested in this if you're international email me and i'll send you a special link other than that it is available in my etsy shop and this one is called the chinese fortune cards what are some possible future energies coming up for us possible future energies coming up for us We have the Queen of Pen or Swords. I love it. The Queen of Swords with planning. 
Now is the time to lay down the foundations for your future. Financial gains are more than likely. So this is a time for you, yes, to be in the moment, but it's also a time for you to be very sharp and assertive when it comes to planning your future. This is not really a time for emotions. It's a time for you to really get structured. It's a time for you to be really quick-witted and very sharp. There's things that are going to require your attention, and so it's time. It's a time for thinking and analyzing, not necessarily a time for emotions and pining and wasting time, you know, uh, waiting on other people that just aren't either on our same vibration or just aren't ready to communicate with us or are not ready to basically be on the same level. It is a time to plan for the future. So we can plan for the future, but we can still experience happiness in the present moment. Last message. We have the five of wands. It says conflict and competition. And we have jealousy. Look at this. There's definitely energy that has come up in this reading of a particular person or people. Okay, because the five of wands can sometimes be a group of people that are just straight up jealous. So unfortunately, this is just the way that life goes sometimes. We can't always be in the presence of people that are, you know, rooting for us. And a part of that is because we have to go through certain you know learning lessons we have to learn how to be assertive and that's why the queen of swords is coming up is because this is going to require the queen of swords energy for you you're going to have to be very strategic when it comes to people that are in your future so it's not necessarily um you know saying oh my gosh be very careful it's so much of a warning oh my god this shit's going to hit the fan no it will only be that way if you look at it that way look at it as becoming this queen of swords. If you're sharp and assertive and you're not wearing your emotions on your sleeve and you're kind of keeping your cards close to you, meaning like you're keeping your hand close to you and you're not really telling too many people your plans or your feelings or your thoughts, then you're not letting people into your world to be able to be a squirrel and you know do that little squirrely energy around you. So it's kind of like being in the nine of pentacles energy. That's why it came through. Spirit's telling you, spend a little bit more time just doing your own thing, planning for your own future. Rather than being in this energy of you know competitive with other people or allowing other people to be competitive with you, just kind of pull away and do your own thing is what I'm seeing for the month of August. Because people, there might be jealousy. There's people that are watching you. There's people that might want to start crap in your world. But as long as you're the Queen of Swords, you're going to cut that shit right out and it's not going to affect you one bit. This Queen of Swords is a master in disguise. So when people try to mess with her, they get the knife. So I love this reading. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye.